How to make perfume for artistic expression. The process of making perfume is sexy if you're a science nerd. From a chemical point of view, perfume is a series of molecules mixed in either alcohol or oil that combine in a way to create a scent. My approach is from the art point of view, but slowly one becomes very familiar with the science and the chemistry of it all. Saskia Wilson-Brown is the founder of the Institute for Art and Olfaction, based in Los Angeles, California. The Institute for Art and Olfaction is primarily an arts organization. We want to create accessibility to the tools of perfumery to people who don't typically have access. The materials of perfumery are actually pretty challenging to find because they're created by international perfume houses. The molecules come in several formats. They often come in powdered format, sometimes liquid, sometimes viscous. So what you have to do is you have to dilute them down to make them workable with alcohol. In the safety of this environment, the general public can experiment, mixing together various compounds in order to create a unique aroma of their very own. At its core, it's very simple. It's not that complicated. You can learn a lot just by tinkering. Perfume is created by mixing aromatic compounds with a solvent, such as water or alcohol. The strength and longevity of the aroma vary depending on the ratio of the aromatic compounds to the solvent. A 10% dilution is your standard lab dilution. 10% molecules, 90% alcohol. The reason we dilute them down is because otherwise you're working with crystals, you're working with solid stuff that just doesn't want to come out of the bottle. Perfumes are categorized according to their concentration levels. There is perfume extract, esprit de parfum, eau de parfum, eau de toilette, eau de cologne, and aftershave, often referred to as splash. It's all perfume, but it's, it's just different dilutions, so, yeah. Another huge part of the Institute is really the arts. We work with institutions like the Hammer or local artists to incorporate scent into their practice. So for instance, you know, artist A wants to make a piece that has a scent component. This artist would probably have no idea where to get the materials, how to blend them, how to put them in a way that would actually propagate in the gallery or the museum. And that's where we come in. We kind of help with the technical aspects of it and also, of course, refine the scent. We start putting together formulas and then they sort of decide which one works for them. And then we have to think about how we're propagating the scent. When it comes to aroma dispersal, the Institute is also highly innovative. One particular installation at The Hammer consisted of a large machine which evenly spread various perfumes throughout the audience. The machine itself is sort of like a large perfume bottle. And it was based on the concept of suction that pulled the perfume up these little plastic tubes, then pushed it out of larger tubes, and then sort of dispersed over the crowd. It wasn't perfect, but it worked extremely well. Perfume in its basic form is molecules, alcohol, and a bottle. But when you're at the Institute for Art and Olfaction, it's also a mixture of art and science. For Science Friday, I'm Christian Baker.